The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. The Ben Heck Show presents the Star Wars Holiday Special. It's a Wonderful Life Day, sponsored by Aspartame Free Soda Products. What if I told you there was a device that could keep the ones you love from starving? Not from a Jedi, but from the new wave Star Wars branded convection oven. It cooks with unlimited power! <laughs> I'm afraid your meals will be fully cooked by the time your friends arrive. Now, witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational desktop cooking gadget. Star Wars Shopping Network? I remember greenlighting that, and I should know. I'm George Lucas. Man, all this merchandising, what has it done? You know, sometimes I wish I'd never created Star Wars. So you wish you never created Star Wars, huh? Maybe. Well, I'm gonna fix it so you see what the world would be like without Star Wars. <gasps> You're not gonna like it, George. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet. Troll! Regrettable acting. Bend them hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. It's that time of the millennium again. Time for a new Star Wars movie. You excited? Yeah, I am. Do you have your tickets Are you excited? already? Oh, I have, I have tickets. Do you have your tickets? No, I'm just gonna like wing it. I'm gonna, I'll just walk in Friday at 7 p.m. There'll probably be openings, right? Are you gonna X-wing it? So yeah, Star Wars is coming out and we're all excited. So we figured we should do a Star Wars related build here on the Ben Heck Show. Oh, you know what? My friend has an old R2-D2 can cooler, like the kind you would see in a gas station. Oh, like you a would... promotional item? Absolutely. You fill it with ice and you put the cans of soda in there and you can just pull them out. Except that his is missing the head. Right. Uh, but I saw online where you find all of the cool ideas. Uh, someone took a 22 inch Weber charcoal grill and oh. took the bottom half of it and cut off all the extra metal and it fit almost perfectly. It's the same diameter? It, it's al almost, it's, but it's close enough that we can make it work. Okay. So, so we can make some sort of cool R2-D2 can cooler. Yeah. Maybe it opens when you use the force. Like, <gasps> you want to give me a soda R2-D2. So making the lid open like this, if we were to use a Weber well, grill like a you're Weber suggesting, grill, that's way too heavy. It's very heavy. It's gonna be like, what, 20 pounds? 15, or? 20 pounds, probably. So maybe it's better to have it rotate. Ooh, spin? So, yeah, it could be like a sliding glass door or a rotating door. Mm -hmm. There's a part of the dome that's always open, and then there's kind of a closed section inside of it. Okay. And it starts out like this, so the closed section on the inside and the opening match up, like an airlock. And then when you wave your hand, he rotates 90 degrees to bring the open section front so you can get the soda mm. or the beer or the So you got a nice beer. you got a nice force and then it turns, you get to reach in and grab your soda. And then R2D2 could make noises while he does it like beep, boop, 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 boop. Okay, well I think we have a pretty good plan of attack for this R2D2 build. Let's get started. Karen is also a part of the Bodgery, a local hacker space here in Madison, just down the road from the Ben Heck shop. She's going to use a disc grinder to cut off all the metal parts from the Weber grill that we don't need, which is most of them actually. Although we will leave some of the pieces inside for structural support. The holes and other gaps we can fill in later with Bondo. We then have to figure out the best way to cut the hole for the soda access. We want it to look like one of R2-D2's existing panels, so it actually fits into the main design. Karen then uses her grinder to carefully cut out the shape so we can use it later if we need to. While Karen is off slicing holes in R2-D2's new head, I'm going to get some measurements set up so we can create structures inside of it to mate the head with the main base of the unit. So I created some measurements on my computer. I'm doing it in 2D for now. So these shapes represent the R2-D2 unit, the cross section, so to speak. I'm thinking we could use some of these skate bearings. These are pretty inexpensive and easy to find. 22 millimeters, seven millimeters thick, eight millimeter inner shaft. So I drew it in the computer here. 
And what I'm thinking is that we can have, you know, four or five of these around the top of the unit, probably built into the head, and they can ride on a track inside of this. So here's my drawing. So this would represent the eight millimeter shaft. This is the bearing, and this is part of a piece that will hold it. So what I think I will do first is create this design in three dimensions and then print out a test. Okay, so these are the sketches that make up the three-dimensional object that I want to build. And I'm using the Autodesk Fusion software. One really cool thing is, I can go to Insert and Insert McMaster Car Part, and I can go to right to their website and select something in here and then actually put the three-dimensional drawings into Fusion 360. Now let's see, shaft diameter eight millimeter, outer diameter 22 millimeter with, okay, that's a skate bearing. Uh, the master car has nice drawings of pretty much everything. So if I click on this part right here, I go to product detail. Okay, here is the drawing. So you step, save, boom. Now it's right in my program. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so I've oriented the bearing uh, 90 degrees and I'm going to create a shaft here, which will represent an eight millimeter steel rod. And then I'll create a structure around it. Okay, there we go. So this is what will ride inside of the head of our unit. Okay, so I'm gonna select on this inner piece here and go extrude. I'm gonna go half an inch, even though it's a uh, metric piece. Okay, and let's do new body. All right. So that shows the complete assembly. We have the shaft, the bearing, and this is a 3D printed part. So one neat thing with this Fusion program so I can actually select which bodies I want to uh, export. So I can turn off these things and I can just click on, the, well, I can go up to make and then click on the object I want to make, hit okay, and it takes it right into the MakerWare software. That's pretty cool. Here is a 3D printed part that we created. Now a bearing rotates around itself so you have an inner shaft here, which is inert in this case, and the outer shaft spins around it. So we have little bits of extrusion here, which actually will grip onto that, making sure it doesn't rotate. And it also is used to make sure that the main part of the bearing that does rotate isn't impeded by plastic. Okay, seems to spin nicely. So I'll keep printing these. The idea will be to have you know five total. I think four might be a little too few, around the R2-D2 so his head can rotate smoothly. Okay, now that we've printed that part, we can continue designing. I have drawn a bearing mount here. This is the five of them inside of the head. And I've also taken the inner diameter dimensions of the head and the body and all of that into account. Okay, so the head is going to have gearing on the inside of it. And then the main gear will be like this. So this gear will drive this from the inside, which I think is how we did the plant rotator years and years ago. We're using the ShopBot CNC machine to mill half-inch PVC foam, which we'll use to create the inner gear mechanism. There are square gaps every so often in the foam where we will place the 3D printed roller bearing guides. These will mesh with the bottom of the R2 unit, giving us a smooth linear motion. Okay, Karen, I made this the other day. Ooh. It's basically a geared Lazy Susan. So this should fit in here, okay. right? All right. And the joint or mating line of where the head goes to the body mm -hmm. is plain with this edge here. Okay. So we still need to figure out a few more things. I've put screw holes in the four quadrants, which is kind of redundant if you think about it. And my idea is we need to make some sort of spacers okay. that will hold this at the right level above the existing lip. Yeah. So we need to brainstorm an idea for that. I mean, we can cut more Sintra and make some lifts, but how do we attach these actual tines in here? Well, yeah, we've got, so we've got these four tines in here and we could probably just drill a hole. There's enough space around here and it's thick enough steel that we could just drill one hole in each of the four of these and then make another ring, bolt it to that and then just make spacers like legs that connect the two. Okay, that makes sense. Cause if we made a spacer, you know, we couldn't really drill all the way through it into this. Exactly. Or we can't. All, we also can't drill from under it. Exactly. So that way we can bolt through, you know, parallel material, and then have something going perpendicular up, and then it'd be easier to bolt those two together. Okay. So the ring could be fairly thin, right? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. 
So cut a ring and then figure out the spacers from there. So we just cut apart, look at it, cut apart, look at it. Mm -hmm. That sounds reasonable. First, we attach the inner gear to the Weber grill. And then we begin cutting pieces on the router for the lower portion of this mechanism. This is the part that the bearings will mesh into to complete the R2-D2 rotational head. We cut some more pieces in order to complete the head. Do you want to show the rail we created? So if we spin it like this. Yeah. So this is going to go into the base of the R2 and the bearings on the head will glide in these rails. Then the stepper motor here is going to be mounted right here and it will engage with the ring. Well, I hope it will. <laughs> you ready to assemble? Let's do it. All right. We give the dome a nice silver base color of paint, and once that's dry, we start applying masks. We use 3M painter's tape, transfer tape, which is normally used for vinyl graphics, and also laser cut paper patterns to create the shapes for the segmented sections on the R2-D2 dome. They come out a nice blue color. Once it's dry, we peel it all off, and then we touch up any mistakes with silver and blue markers. For demo purposes, I'm going to solder a propeller dev board to some perf board and then also attach a stepper motor driver so we can see if we can get the head to move. Here's what I want to use with the R2-D2 head. We have an easy stepper driver here. We've used these before on other projects. And this is the prop dev stick. It has a propeller microcontroller and an SD card. A friend of mine makes these and I figured it would be a good fit for this project because we could put sound effects on the SD card. I've wired this to the stepper controller, so this will allow us to test the motor out and see if we can make it move. Then if this all works, we hook up the limit switch here, main power here, stepper motor here. So everybody is working on a different part of this R2 project at the moment. I am working with these ping sensors to detect the force wave. Um, I found a object on the Parallax website, which is a dual ping sensor, basically it runs two at the same time, which is what we need because we need to see the, a change in direction. So we have a baseline of 142, what I'm assuming are inches. That's probably it hitting the ceiling or it is basically going beyond its possible range. So I wanna see what happens when I wave my hand at about 18 inches. Okay, pause that. Okay. So what we're looking for is one sensor to change before the other. So we have 80, 142, then we have 49, 80, 33, 48, and they should taper off the other direction as well. Yeah. Okay, let's try a few more. We need to know what to look for. And pause. 83, 142, 53, 142. Okay, so it looks like one of them triggers before the other one, and then they both kind of taper off. I think if I angle them out a little bit, instead of being, you know, level with each other, it'll probably work a little better. So what we're probably gonna look for is that one number drops down and then the other number drops down in that sequence. If they both go evenly, that's like someone approaching it. And we'll also set a limit, like the wave has to be within 18 inches. So if we see a change from one to the other, 
and all of the numbers are below 18 inches, then we assume it is a force wave. Using the diameter of the Weber grille as a reference, I designed an R2-D2 eyepiece that will fit the curvature of it. It's actually one of the largest things I've ever printed on the MakerBot. We'll have to clean it up and paint it, but then it'll be ready for the R2 unit. Then I printed a dome that fits the shape of the eye inside of the eyepiece, and I'm forming plastic black mesh over it to create kind of a simulated dome. The reason I'm not using rounded plastic is because we can't shoot the ultrasonic rangefinder through a solid surface. Okay, here's the 3D printed R2-D2 eye with the rounded mesh in it. Uh, let's see if we can shoot the ultrasonic sound waves through the mesh. I think we should be okay. As long as we're not too close to the mesh. It's kind of like when you focus with your eyes. If you get close enough, you just focus right past it. Apparently sound is the same way. Okay, it looks like it's still working through the mesh. That's cool. All right, so I think we have the depth sensor working all right. I added a headphone jack so we can get the R2-D2 sound effects to play off of this. So now we need to mesh everything together and get the motor driver working. I cut these foam core supports to fit in under the lower lip and they angle out to hold the piece that Karen cut away from R2. And I think we can use that as the closed door as well. I'm just mocking this up for now before I use the slower to cut expensive material. I'm just laser cutting a proof of concept here. So this will stay in place inside the R2 and the dome will rotate around it. Yeah, I'll probably need to do some adjustments. These go up a lot higher than they need to and they're not quite as low as they should be. Anyway, when you do the force wave, he comes this way so you can get your hand in there and then this is his closed state like that. And then we Still have to add the eyepiece here, which will have the sensor in it, but he's starting to look like an R2-D2. Okay, we brought R2 over here by the bench power supply. Felix has hooked up a motor driver that we had laying around. Uh, we had to be careful not to move the head because we'll feed current back into the circuit. We'll basically be making a generator and that's not good because that can damage things. So we don't want to put current mm -hmm. into the circuit. We want the circuit to provide current to the motors. You ready, Felix? Yeah. Here we see go. What Are we slipping? Oh no, it's slipping. Okay. Shoot. So I guess we're back to that. Well, that's better than smoke coming out of it. Yes, much better. So the gear is slipping again. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. What was the problem with the old gear, Felix? It was slipping around the shaft of the motor. Mm. So we created a new gear to try to avoid that problem. It's in two pieces. There's an inner core, which we 3D printed out of carbon fiber because it was loaded in the printer, also because it's strong. And it receives a quarter inch nut and a quarter inch screw. So my thought is we bolt this onto the shaft mm -hmm. because we use like the finer detail to 3D print. And then we put the CNC cut larger gear onto it. This carbon fiber should be less susceptible to compression than the cincher as well. Ah, there we go. Okay, now we slip this onto it with a convenient space for the screw head. We were having some trouble with the old driver we were using, so we found an even older driver. This is a ancient three axis CNC driver board that I used way back in like episode four for a CNC machine. Anyway, we hooked it up and now we're having pretty good results. I think I need to reseal the heat sink, but it's definitely working. I'm only going about 45 degrees, obviously, because I don't want to cut off <laughs> the cable. So basically what we need to do is wire this up inside of the head along with the microcontroller that will sense the motion. And then if we have time, we might add a little speaker in there to give us our R2 sounds. And we're actually using a spare MakerBot power supply because it's 24 volts, which is what this motor is intended to run at. I went online and downloaded some R2-D2 sound effects, put them into Adobe Premiere. Uh, there's about five of them to choose from. So what we'll do is we'll have the R2 can cooler make these noises when it opens up. Added a trailing off sound effect to each one because a lot of times when you get sound effects online, they end abruptly, but that's not very good for editing purposes. So I just have a generic little R2 beep boop boop 
right there, trailing off on each one. So I'll export these as WAV files and put them into a folder structure, which I will show you now. Okay, so I'm just gonna rip off my own file system for my pinball machine since I know it'll work. So we created, well, this is for graphics, but sound effects folder has our five sound effects in it. Cool. And we're gonna copy this file structure to the FAT32 SD card. Done, all right. I can now insert that SD card into the prop dev stick and use it to play sounds. That's one reason I wanted to use the propeller for this project. It can drive a stepper motor and drive the distance sensor and play audio all at the same time using its multiple cores. I put together all the electronics inside of R2-D2 and he also has the sensor attached to his eye. I'm going to do a homing test now for the motor. So when the microcontroller starts up, it tries to home the head. So it will move the motor in a certain direction to rotate the head closed until it hits this switch here. That'll be the home position. It'll push in on it and then it'll reverse the motor just until the switch is released. And then it'll set that as zero. Let's give it a shot. I will just use my finger to simulate the lid. Click, release, and then he'll start making noise. So before I had the microcontroller hooked up to the USB port, now the microcontroller is getting the five volts from the stepper driver. So I just have to turn on the main power supply with a strip over here and it should home. Okay, Karen, we completed the force open R2-D2 beverage cooler. So why don't you go ahead and use the force, Karen. Wow, a delicious soda or beer or milk. Wow, you're like really excited about this thing, Karen. It's so cool. Oh, okay. What if, what if I want another soda? Well, I'll just use the force again. Here, Ben, have a soda. Okay, thanks. You don't want to drink this soda. This isn't the soda you're looking for because I prefer soda with aspartame. It's a 50% chance you're gonna die attitude. of cancer anyway. Who cares? What if Felix wants a soda? Felix, would you like a soda? Yes. Okay. Here you go, Felix. All right, Ben, well, you don't look so happy. We're, we're done with R2-D2, aren't you excited? Uh, I'm excited that it's done. Uh, okay. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. Okay. Probably because we had him rotate instead of pop open. Mm. But yep. we accomplished it. Yep, all those hidden challenges that you discover throughout the build process. Right, um, you know, making all those concentric rings and gears inside of them, I mean, it added up, but you had to cut a bunch of pieces install them, make sure they fit, and then you've got the design time and the CNC time and the 3D printing time. It can add up. I mean, he looks great. So uh, if you were to do this again, what would you have done differently? Probably something smaller, like okay. maybe a little miniature R2, although you can kind of usually buy those, you know, from yeah. retailers. Perhaps something different in Star Wars. I mean, we talked about making a, what was it, a motorized trivia coffee dispenser for people mm. in line for Star Wars. That was the original idea for this episode. And yeah. That probably wouldn't have been any more In, in easy. the long run, it probably would have been more less work. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I did, well, I, I think with the dispenser mixed with the trivia would have been a little much. Yeah, but. that's the thing. You kind of have to pick your battles when yeah. you're you know, working on the schedule. It's like, what's the main thing we can make this do? I mean, yeah, you might want to do you know, X, Y, Z things, but yeah. you might just do X. If you decided to build your own R2-D2, what would you have done differently than what we did in our builds? Or what features would you have liked to see us incorporate into our own R2-D2? Let us know on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. Where you can also read about our upcoming episodes, builds, special events, and see exclusive behind the scene content created by Karen. We'll see you next time. Oh, wait a minute, who are you anyway? I'm Clarence the Angel. Okay, but what do you mean Star Wars never existed? The world looks the same to me. Spare some change, mister? Well, sure, I've, I've got lots of money. I'll just, only a thousand dollars? Clarence, where's the other three million, nine hundred ninety-nine million, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand? You never made all that merchandising money, George. Well, how am I supposed to help this poor, wait a minute, I know your face anywhere. You're Steven Spielberg. 
How do you know my name? Why, everybody knows your name. You're one of the greatest directors of all time. Sure, this start of my career was promising, and critics thought I was going to go really far. But then I made 1941, and that was a spectacular flop. I never made a movie again, and now I'm just a washed up bum. Well, that's not true. You and I made Raiders of the Lost Ark together. It was a smash hit. It saved your career. You never helped him make it, George. Clarence, I want to live in a world with Star Wars again. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! <laughs> Wait a minute. It was all a dream. Does Star Wars exist again? Me for Mac. Yahoo! Happy holidays, you crazy old space frog! Sponsored by Aspartame Free Soda Products. Hey, wait a minute! You're Steven Spielberg! Yeah. He's like... <laughs> and you're not gonna like it, George. <laughs> this is good! Oh, it's hard not to laugh at Felix. And after my movie, 1941 was a fat pat to pop him. Well, I'm gonna fix it so you never see. <laughs> the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.